Hi, Phil. How are you doing, man? I'm good, man. Excellent. Ah, now, this is a different, uh, different, different video today. What are we doing? We are actually um, one of our um, subscribers. Yes. Asked that uh, because he's, you know, he wants to improve his um, warm-ups and you know how to get his, his technique down for just lead mm -hmm. playing. So he actually asked, could I do a video on technique? Perfect. Which I've never been asked to do before in my life. Have so. you not? <laughs> I don't know what to do. No, I do. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a few pointers which might help. All right. So bear with me. Um, I'm gonna ask if you could be a guinea pig, Phil. I'll be a guinea pig. Would you be my guinea pig? Yes. Okay. Here we go. But just be gentle. I will. I'll be gentle. I, I will. I will. You're Mr. Shredlicious. I'm no, Mr. No, no, I'm not. I'm not Mr. Rockalicious. <laughs> but um, now I've turned off all the effects in this because yes. it's just going to be purely just so you can hear all the notes. Nice and, and nice and not too, not too loud either. So, okay. but um, always actually the best way to play is, is plugged plugged out. You know, sitting at home okay. watching TV or whatever. It's a great way to play because you can hear every single note. Right. You know. So if I was going to warm up, mm -hmm. I go up to the seventh fret. Right. Like that. Yeah, and what I do is I put all four fingers down, mm -hmm. and I also make sure you know it's a nice the thumb is just around here on the back of the on the uh, crescent of the neck like that, just around there, nice and comfy. So your uh, comf com you know comfort is very important to be nice and comfy when you're playing. So um, before I talk about the um, playing hand, I talk about the picking hand. Right. So what I do as well is I always have about fifteen percent of the pick up or pick up pick, fifteen percent of the pick. How's that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Turn, turn around, turn it. Oh no, other way. Turn around. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, like that. Best description I heard of it. It's like you're writing with chalk on the ground. You wouldn't like write with chalk. You'd say if guys play with a pick, they're like this, where it's flopping all over the place. Oh yeah. If you're gonna write with chalk on the ground, you always hold it real tight in your hands so you write, uh, you know, perfectly. And that is the way you hold it as well. About 15% of the pick. Yeah. Nice and tight as well. You hold it tight. Uh, you don't let the pick play you, you play the pick. Yeah. Keep it nice and tight. Okay. Second thing I'd say, Phil, it's looking pretty dark up there. Oh, well. Oh, that will be okay, we'll survive. Keep on going. <laughs> we'll keep on going until it rains. <laughs> but um, another thing to talk about as well, and very important, is, in fact, I'll have to show it, the wrist. Right. Very important. A lot of players don't do it. They're real tight and their okay. whole arm is moving, and I have to move the whole arm. No need for that. Everything moves from the wrist okay. in minuscule little movements. Okay. Like that, see? Yeah. Economy of movement. EOM. Economy of movement. A tiny bit here. Another great thing to do, this is just the first note. I like it. Extra notes. That's good. Bring in more notes here. We need more notes. Even one note when you're playing, you make a pattern out of it, so you don't yeah. just go. You kind of go. You're kind of making patterns. Now, yeah. I like it. So, <laughs> then, this is like all warm ups, this is kind of warm up stuff. So, then what you do is you put all four fingers down like this. So, well, you obviously play them first. Or play them. And what's happening there is, you're doing a down up thing. It's very, very important. You have big down, up, down, up. Everything is down, up. And I would suggest starting really slowly. And then you can, you can, you know, as you, and you try and get little rhythms going, like did little, did little. If you can actually hum it back to yourself, so you might have da 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 da. Then you go did little, did little. Then you go backwards. Lots of them. Then you try each string. Now it takes a while to warm up, you know, you wouldn't do this immediately like I'm doing. You'd actually have to warm up over about, you know, 20 minutes. 
I keep doing that until you get faster and faster and then it gets more fun because let's say we're on the seventh fret here which is a great starter point it's pretty much the middle of the guitar neck you know so you're seven eight nine ten seven eight nine ten yeah. what you do then is you slide up by one yeah so you're seven eight nine ten eleven so you get this lovely It's just, it's a bit of fun, I like doing it, it's the diminished. It's nice to spread the fingers. I always do it on the C sharp. Now, we talk about this, it's very important. Oh, oh, hang on. We go, start on the fourth fret. And you have this spacious kind of thing going on here. It's basically one four in terms of the fingers. One four. One four, one four. That's it. And then, very important, when you get to the B string next, you have to go up by two frets. Yeah. So that's really important to note. So for example, if you were starting on the fourth fret, you do a jump here. To, Two frets instead of one to accommodate for the B. Oh, oh, so then you go, oh yeah, and then it's just one. That's it. So you go from eight, eleven, yeah. to nine, twelve. That's it. Yeah. Now coming back is interesting because I figured it out you could come back like this. Sorry. But it's pretty staid and boring, so what I do instead is I kind of flip it off like... Yeah. Yeah, so you're starting on your 12th fret? Yeah. You're actually starting on the open string. Everything's open. The open is only heard for a second, so even if it doesn't fit in, you know, musically it doesn't sound quite right. You do you do it fast so you don't really hear so Yeah. So finally, the last thing I'm gonna go through, which is really important as well, is um yeah, I'll turn them off again. There we go. Is the down up thing, the down up principle coming back. So again, if you notice, something like that, right? Uh, delay, shut up. Ah, there he is. There you go. Now the problem with that is, if you are going backwards down the neck. That's fine on the first two strings. But when you reach the G string, you have a downstroke. So if you look at it, it goes down, up, down, up, down, up. Once you have an up on the thickest string, the next thickest string, mm -hmm. you're fine. But if you have a down on the next thickest string, yeah. it messes up everything. So right. that ruins everything. It's like someone suddenly ties your shoelaces together. It messes with it, but if you, to, to get over this, what you do is you put in an extra note there. So if I call it out here, it would be 10, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7, 6, 7, 6. Yeah, so you get this lovely kind of, um, this is, Again, you have to 
bombo por aí. I threw a few pull offs in there as well, but because I'm not warmed up enough, if I was just doing this and turn it down, have a listen to this. That's pure there, that's a pure down up. Now that's just your warm ups, just to talk about warm ups, and that's really handy for getting those out. The G is the hardest one to get. The other two are fine, it's just. Um, pretty much that, that's the sort of warm ups I would do. If I, you know, and, I, and sometimes I just turn down. And it's much more pure, you can really hear it then. You want to get that, you want to get little rhythms going, like you, for example, you know, um, uh, let's just say, uh, no, you need six. There you go. I'll put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And 
this is another thing. I'm final thing. I'm gonna finish after this. Your bending test. Right. This figures out whether you can bend or not. Are you a bender or not? So this is the bending test. <laughs> okay. <I don't> know. <laughs> right. So look, really cool test. I'll show you. This is a great test my guitar teacher showed me years ago. Very clever. People want to bend, right? They want to bend stuff. They put. What happens when you bend? You either bend too high and it sounds awful. Yeah, which I just did a few minutes ago. Bend like, the pitch. Yeah, you bend the pitch, exactly. So to check the is like an actual ruler to check your bending to pitch is we'll go up to the 12th fret on the G. Yeah? Now, what you do is you play the two notes, you play the two notes beside each other. So you to bend to that now instead of playing it. Good. Right? So that's an easy one, right? So you only have to bend a half step. Okay? Now you bend. You try this. Oh, you went too, you went too high. You went too far, did you? Go back to the I think we're slightly out of tune on this one, actually. Tuning up together would have been a good idea, Probably, but hey, it's yeah. all good. But, but I'll show you here anyway. So, basically what's happening there, you, you, I did a half step. So now I'm yeah. going to listen to a full step. Now I want to bend to that. Which is point. Not really, but the secret to bending is putting as many fingers on the fretboard as possible when you bend. You never bend with one finger, you'll break your finger, you hurt your finger. That's what you want. There's your, there's your, your full uh, tone bend. Now you want to do a tone and a half bend now. So that's my, that's what I have to aim for now. So. And what you find is I use the first three fingers, and then when I'm bending, I bring on all four fingers. Try two, a full two, two, uh, two tone. You're trying to bend up like that. You're so gonna two steps. Yeah, yeah, go for, up. yeah, because what's gonna happen is you can either bend down or you can bend up. Yeah. Obviously, with the last string, you have to bend up. Yeah. Obviously, with the B string, you have to bend up. Yeah. Kind of obviously with the G string, you have to bend up, but you no. could bend down because no, it's a middle string. Same with the D. So and obviously with the E, with the A and the E, you have to bend down. Yeah, for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, because it's easier. It's, it's kind of, it's just easier to do. So, uh, let's see the biggest bend I can do on this. So let's just say we're the G. So let's go. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, the biggest bend you could try. Easy. The B is the easiest one to try it on, mm -hmm. if you want to, because it's just perfect. It's like Goldilocks. It's not too thin. It's not too thick. It's just right. All right. So if you're doing, let's. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. Now go a bit further. So that's uh, that's uh yeah, yeah, so and there we go. That's two tones. So Yeah, there's no one really, it's just showing off, yeah. But that's nearly three tones there, so you know. Oh, it's gonna have a tune, man. That is 
so weird. Yeah, so then, um, I think we'll, we'll leave it at that then, because my guitar is completely gone out of tune. It's beautiful. <laughs> so basically, that it was a kind of an ex exercise for banding, exercise for warm-ups. Remember that? All that kind of stuff. And um, also just holding the pick down, up, constant down, up all the time, mm -hmm. uh, alternate picking. What else were we talking about? Um, well, we did the diminished as well. I can't do re redo it because my guitar is out of tune. Mm -hmm. Oops. And um, yeah, so that's basically a few pointers, Phil, isn't it? It is, yes. And thank you for being a guinea pig. No problem. You were a great <laughs> guinea pig, Phil. And um, yeah. Sounded good. So you can just um, entertain us with some kind of Peter Greenesque kind of tunes, <laughs> and I will turn off the video. Yeah, ah, I like it already. Oh yeah, one more point. One more point. So I think if you like this and you want me to do more kind of pointers and tips, mm -hmm. let me know in the um, comments. Right. And if you hated it, let me know too. <laughs>